guys ready for this? <laughs> All right, I'm going to tell you about this, this crazy journey I've been on to understand this tormenting thing called work. Because about 12 years ago, I had this incredible fear that came over me that, that I was going to get stuck in this life sentence of work, you know, chained to a, to a cubicle or to a desk that I just couldn't get away from. And I realized, you know, that I wasn't alone with that fear. A lot of my friends were feeling the same way. And in fact, I started to discover that 80% of people under the age of 30 want to change career paths but feel like they can't already. And I started to wonder, what is going on with work? Why is it so confusing? Why is it this tormenting thing that, that's driving a lot of us and tying us in knots? So I wanted to figure out why that was happening. And more importantly, what I could do about it. So my first discovery in this was, was this trying to figure out the transition from school to work. And I came up with this idea called, that was the river, this is the sea. And it essentially says, school is a river. It's this protected pursuit. It's got banks on both sides, this current that guides you down. It goes at the same speed for everybody. Whether you get 50% or 90%, you show up in the same grade with everyone else the next year. And then all of a sudden it ends and you get emptied out into this sea and it's forever big. There's, there's no banks on either side. There's nothing on the horizon. There's no current. And these two things that are forced to be together are fundamentally different. And, and what you learn and how you learn to thrive in one doesn't really make sense for the next. So I figured, you know, that made a lot of sense for me. For, but in terms of this understanding of why work was different today, that really didn't pull the whole picture together because, you know, school's always been a river and work's always been the sea. So I wanted to go back as far as I could, as far back into human existence as I could. We traveled back 200,000 years, and what I discovered was that for that entire length of time, work was about the production of food. Work was food. That, in the majority of, of all people, in every single country in the world, produced food up until 1900. And then something changed. This incredible ripple effect through work. 1900, the most advanced countries in the world, the states, Britain, Belgium, they start to produce things instead of, instead of food. This blue collar movement explodes. Work changes overnight. Organizations change overnight. The first time in our human existence that work absolutely transforms across the globe. Huge change. But we're not done there. We start to produce so many things that we need people who strategize about those things, market those things, sell those things. And so the white collar movement takes takes form. Again, this major change to works. Fa families change. Organizations change. And this, this incredible journey we've been on for 200,000 years has these two major events that happened in the last hundred. And so when people start to realize, why am I confused about this thing called work? Why is it thing tormenting me? It's because we're still trying to make sense of it all. And it's not done there. Because what happened 40 years ago? This thing called the information age came up and absolutely smashed into work and transformed work once again. Game-changing transformation. And this just happens to be the time that you and I are trying to figure out our careers. We're trying to launch our careers, make sense of our careers. And everybody's confused. We're all still trying to figure out this next generation of work. You know, there was a storm that rolled through the Caribbean in 1998. Huge storm. Hurricane Mitch. Worst storm to hit that region in 200 years. It started down the lower islands, came up northwest, dropped down over Honduras, and it just rained. It rained and it rained and it rained for days and days. They know that it rained 35 inches in two days. They think that it rained 70 inches in four days, but it wiped out all the recording equipment. You know, it rained into these hills, it rained into these mountains, and it started to pour down. All this water running down through these hills into this gully. And it took this river that had been carving itself into the earth for millions of years and shifted it overnight. I'm gonna give you a sense, give you a chance for your eyes to get accustomed to this picture. You'll see the river that changed overnight and this bridge that made so much sense the day before was now obsolete. <laughs> and my point is this, school's a river, work is the sea. It's always been that way, but our river has shifted. The, re the relationship is so different nowadays. You know, the next generation of work, it's so incredible. The opportunities we have to transform work and to lead in new directions is unlike anything that's come before, but it comes with a heavy burden. It comes with confusion. And unless you learn how to manage yourself 
things will get pretty tough. You know, school has always been a river, work's always been the sea, but the sea's bigger today than it ever has been before. And it's got these waves. And if you want to try to tread water like you did in school and make it through, it's going to keep smashing up against the rocks. It's got these waves that pour down over people. And so what defines the next generation of work? What defines the next generation of workers is our ability to swim, to move ourselves in our own direction, to get ourselves over the waves, to grit our teeth, find a way over, to find something on the horizon that nobody else can see but you and start to get out there and start to pull yourself closer and closer and closer. You know, the other option is you can sit in your desk and look at that clock for the next 40 years, hoping for those second hands to turn by a little bit faster. And I'd rather not. So I follow the advice of one of the coolest guys I know. This guy who is the godfather of management and leadership thinking. He studied society and organizations for, for decades. Peter Drucker. And at age 91 in 2001, he made this observation a few years before he, he died. He said, in a few hundred years, when the history of our time will be written from a long-term perspective, it's likely the most important event historians will see is not technology, not the internet, not e-commerce. It's an unprecedented change in the human condition. For the first time, literally substantial and rapidly growing numbers of people have choices. For the first time, they'll have to manage themselves, and society is totally unprepared for it. Ladies and gentlemen, the next generation of work is about managing yourself. Don't get caught off guard. Don't get stuck treading water. Thank you.